The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. Today I have a very special guest with me. Her name is Kathy Humbugger. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Patty. Thank you for having me. She's the Vice President of Policy Enforcement at Indiana Right to Life and also Executive Director at Allen County Right to Life. So we're going to be chatting well. It's the day after the elections, Trump came in, so let's talk about that. So now that Trump, Trump has won, what does that mean for our government? Well, Patty, you're right. We are recording this the day after election, and I think there are a lot of people that are um, um, just wondering how all this is going to play out while many of us were hopeful for this outcome. Very few people, I think, thought it was going to be as clear and decisive a victory as it was, mm. um, not only for the president, but all the way down the ticket, particularly Surprising. here in Indiana and other states. So I think that remains to be seen. We have every reason to believe that with his pick of um, uh, the governor of Indiana, Mike Pence, as his uh, vice presidential running mate, mm -hmm. um, that he will be very wise in picking the advisors around him. It's too soon to tell who those will be other than the ones that uh, are already um, involved. I'm very hopeful that with um, the influence of Mike Pence, who has carried the banner for years when he was in the Congress to defund Planned Parenthood, oh, that we'll see measures like that being uh, uh, successful in a Trump administration. But really, it's too early to tell. Well, it, this year marks the 100th year of Planned Parenthood being in existence. Yes, it does. So, do you think Roe versus Wade, which started in the 70s, will be uh, reversed, I hope? Hopefully. Um, that was a Supreme Court decision that, in effect, struck down the pro-life laws, um, laws prohibiting abortions in all, uh, all the states in one fell swoop with one decision. So a reversal of Roe would mean that each state would decide what the um, abortion laws would be in that individual state. So mm. a reversal of Roe would return the argument back to the states. Right. Even prior to Roe, there were states that had already legalized abortions and some that had much more um, restrictive laws. Additionally, um, Another way that this could be addressed would be for a, an amendment to be added to the U.S. Constitution, which would um, be um, the ultimate protection for the unborn. Isn't there something already in the uh, Constitution to, that all people are equal, we have equal rights? So? Yes, the, the rub comes in that there are those who interpret that to mean born people, and yeah. they don't extend those same rights of the Constitution and those same protections to the unborn. It's quite logical to think that it does. One would think so. Hmm. So uh, hopefully Planned Parenthood will be defunded. That's up to the Supreme Court? No, that, no? Um, that is a provision that's usually in budgeting items that have to um, originate in the House of Representatives and we'll see what happens there. Mm -hmm. As you may recall, several years ago, Indiana attempted to defund taxpayer money yeah. um, and withhold taxpayer money from Planned Parenthood. That law passed and was signed into, or that legislation was passed and signed into law, and then it was immediately challenged in the courts. We had some uh, wins out of that particular 
piece of legislation, depending on the source of the money. Mm -hmm. But the biggest source of funding for Planned Parenthood is Medicaid dollars and that kind of thing. We lost that particular uh, lawsuit, and mm -hmm. um, so we'll see what happens at the national level. I will remind everyone that when now Vice President-elect Mike Pence mm -hmm. was U.S. Congressman from Indiana, Mike yeah. Pence, right. he routinely introduced legislation to remove taxpayer dollars from funding Planned Parenthood. So with him being the Vice President-elect, we anticipate that he will still have that um, in his heart, yeah. and I'm certain he'll do everything he can to advocate from the administrative branch, uh, which, as um, as we understand, is separate from the legislative branch. So uh, it's not quite as simple as Donald Trump being elected president, and then the next day, taxpayer funding doesn't go to Planned Parenthood. Oh, right. Yeah. It would have been nice. The House... The Congress and mm -hmm. the Senate, they're all Republican? Not all. Not all? No. Uh, the, the Republicans held on to majorities mm -hmm. in both the Senate and the House. Oh, yeah. So there are Democrats in the House and right. in the Senate, but the Republicans held on to the majorities, which means they hold on to the leadership positions, right. and they also hold on to the chairman of the committees. So it's really uh, important yeah. that um, those elected officials who are pro-life, uh, and they typically, they are typically Republican, not to get too partisan here, but um, that, that those positions of leadership are filled with people who are going to move pro-life legislation. Um, there are some procedural rules, especially in the Senate, that mm -hmm. make it difficult to move legislation, but we'll see what happens. For the Supreme Court, how do they get uh, the members Elect. The, the uh, members of the Supreme Court are nominated Maybe. by the President of the United ah, States, so. and then his uh, selection is sent to the, the Senate for what they call advice and consent. So the senators of both parties have an opportunity to consider the candidate mm -hmm. uh, that the, gov that the uh, President has selected as, as his nominee. And there are hearings held and, and uh, a lot of meetings that go on so that the senators can understand who the nominee is. And then ultimately they take a vote and um, determine if they're going to approve of the nomination. That's a lot of work. Well, How long <laughs> the, does that take? The, months? The, well, it depends. Mm -hmm. um, uh, current sitting President Barack Obama nominated a replacement for... Um, um, Judge Scalia a number of months ago, right. but since it was so close to the election, the senators, uh, who the, the Republican senators who hold the majority, decided that they were going to wait until after the election to consider his nominee. I would be very surprised if they consider his nominee, but right. let the, the clock run out, and then the new president will send them a nominee. I'm just hoping that Obama in his last several months as president will not uh, do anything to uh, try to reverse everything that we're trying to do. Well, he's already done a lot, so uh, there there may be, at least for our issue, not a whole lot more that he can do. If he does anything by executive order, mm -hmm. that can be undone, undone. by, um, the, by the, the new president upon taking office. That's cool. Um, with 100 years of murdering or doing what I call baby sacrifices, since Roe versus Wade, how many abortions have there been done here well, in the it, United States? It's interesting, Patty, that you refer to them as baby sacrifices because this is nothing new as um, those of us who, uh, who are, uh, are people of faith yeah. And students of the Bible, we understand that back in the Old Testament times, it was um, a practice of the um, people who worshipped idols to sacrifice their babies to idols. They would actually throw them in the fire mm -hmm. as a sacrifice to their, their idols. So um, if we think we've come a long way since Old Testament times, I, I think we're not looking at reality. Yeah. We're still dismembering um, little boys and girls 
and discarding them with surgical waste um, every day here in the United States. That's the reality of the situation. It's difficult to determine exactly how many babies <coughs> have lost their lives at the hands of the abortionist because there's different reporting requirements. And um, oh. some states have no reporting at all. So um, conservative estimates are somewhere in the neighborhood of 58 million babies that, that have lost makes their the lives. whole country. Uh, indeed. Uh, since um, since Roe versus Wade, but we only the Lord knows for sure. Well, there are is there for the wee ones and the and the mothers and fathers. Indeed, and there's. Um, uh, I've I've known many women who've chosen an abortion in the midst of their crisis situation, yeah. and um, it's been one of the blessings of my position to be able to see them find healing at the foot of the cross of the Lord Jesus, just like there is for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, after Trump is sworn into office, will National Right to Life and other uh, head people of the pro-life organizations uh, go to meet up with the president uh, to help decide what happens to the babies, uh, especially with the baby parts like universities, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics? are using the babies, the aborted babies, in their experiments. Well, let's, that has to be changed. Let's look at the, um, at the bigger uh, question, or the broader question that uh, is included in, in your question here, and that is, will the national leaders of pro-life organizations meet with um, President-elect Trump? Let me uh, just tell you that there have already been meetings going oh, on, uh, even in the run-up to the election. As a matter of fact, um, Marjorie Dannenfelser of the Susan B. Anthony List, oh, a, yes. a very pro-life organization, was named as his um, advisor on life issues. And, and if memory serves me correctly, I think there were several that were part of an advisory committee that was, was headed, by, headed up by her. Uh, so we, um, those of us who are in the pro-life movement, have already had the ear of uh, candidate um, Donald Trump mm -hmm. in the run-up to the election through our pro-life leaders. I anticipate that that will continue. And of course, he has one of the strongest advocates speaking in his ear in his vice president, Mike Pence. Mike Pence. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that he is the running mate, the future vice president. Indeed. And in January, they're, what's the word? Inaugurated. Inaugurated. Mm -hmm. With universities and pharmaceuticals and cosmetics and all the, all those people, um, it's been so embedded into society to do stuff with baby parts. Indeed. And how are we going to help change well, the Well, the Center for Medical Progress um, started releasing videos over a year ago now. I'm sure you've seen them and heard of them, uh, which exposed what goes on behind the closed doors of Planned Parenthood in regard to the trafficking of the body parts of the yes. aborted babies. That caused um, and in several investigations, both at the state level and at the federal level. And Representative Marsha Blackburn is, is heading up a select committee to look into these um, uh, infractions and any malfeasance that may, may be done. The law, the federal law, says that babies, the body parts of aborted babies may legally be used for experimentation, but no one can profit from it. So well, still the it, it's still a horrific yes, uh, it thought. Yeah, that needs um, to be changed. It, it's come to the attention of those, uh, the authorities, that mm -hmm. there appears to be some profiting that's going on um, by this whole trafficking situation. So that select committee uh, continues their investigative work and will do so until they get to the bottom of it. And they have... Um, I mean, the whole uh, society... I mean, they have been so used to since Roe versus Wade, even before that, uh, thinking is a normal thing to do, but it's not. Well, in in a twisted sort of way, Patty, um, these mothers are in crisis situations, and yeah. they believe the lie that yeah. for a price, the abortionist can erase the life of their baby 
and then they find out later that that's just not possible. But when they're in the midst of the crisis, yes. oftentimes abortion abortion providers come to them and, and they... Pray on them. Well, they they explain uh, that, they're, that it may be helpful to the woman if she knows that something good is going to come out of her abortion. So that's the way they approach her to get permission to use the body parts of her baby mm. in um, research because there's no no benefit to the woman. Yeah. There's no monetary benefit to the, the mother, right. uh, but there is monetary benefit that is realized by the abortion provider. So they have a vested interest in approaching the mother in such a way that they're saying to her, wouldn't you like to see something good come out of this? And um, oh, they're seeing something good out of it. Exactly. So um, the pe- the woman who, if the law is passed in each state not to do any more abortions, mm-hmm. and there's still people, women, who want to abort, how can we help them? How can we reach out to them? They, I know well, we're reaching out to them now. The, the, the best way is to continue our efforts to make certain that everyone knows that the services of pregnancy resource centers Mm -hmm. across this country by the thousands. Um, Additionally, technology is on our side because anyone who's seen an ultrasound, and that is almost everyone nowadays, um, see that that's a baby. And um, so ultrasound and technology is a a very helpful tool. Is that mandatory? Uh, Depending on the state. um, Here in Indiana, women are required by law to be offered to look at the ultrasound, but they're not forced to look at the ultrasound. So um, depending on which study you look at, somewhere in the neighborhood of 90% of abortion-minded women change their minds if they see their baby um, before making that final abortion decision. So technology is a big tool in our toolbox. Ultimately, the Lord gives... um, all of us a free will, mm-hmm. and if a woman is determined that she is going to have an abortion, um, she will find a way. But That's we're we want to make it as yeah. um, as easy for her to make a decision for life as it is attractive for her to make a decision in the midst of her crisis to end the life of her child. So we have uh, we can just reach out with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and help us under help her understand that we care about her and her baby and the family who... and the family indeed oftentimes families don't even know the uh, that there's a baby involved uh, mm-hmm. and sometimes family members encourage women um, to the point of almost coercing them oh, to have an abortion pressure. so um, the the um, the idea that if abortion is illegal, um, there are some who say, well, that won't make any difference. Women will have abortions anyway. And to some degree, they're probably right. But I can't tell you, Patty, how many women I've had tell me uh, they made their, their abortion decision because it was legal. And if it's legal, that must mean it's okay. Oh. So making abortion, the ending of life of an innocent little boy or girl, illegal is going to save untold numbers of lives. And then we have to be there, of yes. course, to, to care about these women. And also, if they don't want their babies, they can uh, give them out for adoption. In fact, this whole uh, nation needs to be re-educated. Indeed. Um, a study was done a number of years ago about women who are in a crisis pregnancy and asking the question or trying to determine why they don't release their babies for adoption. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, they have the misunderstanding that it's a worse decision to release their baby for adoption than it is to end the baby's life through abortion because they think, well, what if somebody... What if it's someone's bad news? Exactly. Oh, no um, one's going to know. Right. Even the parents who have the baby, they could be the abusers themselves. Well, that does... that. Not possibly, a, but but, yeah, but, but babies aren't placed in the homes of families without adequate um, scrutiny. scrutiny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is a violent nation, and we have predators that take liberties out in our children mm-hmm. via rape, incest, and or murder. Um, especially with the uh, rape and incest, if they get pregnant, 
you, and they, they're afraid to go through their pregnancy, but they don't want to kill it. So you're there for them as well. Oh, certainly. Um, yeah. Those are typically referred to as the hard cases, yes. uh, rape, incest, and, and um, um, child sexual abuse. And, and there's no denying that those are extremely difficult yes. cases. Uh, again, studies have shown that there are better outcomes for the mother if she chooses to give the life to the baby than if she chooses a second violent act of yes. ending the D life of the baby. Double tra traumatize her and killing the baby. Indeed. So, um, post-abortive mothers, they need help, and you are helping them. How uh, organizations that you do? Yes, with. there are uh, organizations that uh, have as their mission to reach women who are struggling with an abortion decision. The Right to Life organizations typically operate in the arenas of public policy and education right. and networking. So yeah. the pregnancy resource centers have tremendous programs to come alongside women, help mm -hmm. them find forgiveness and um, restoration from the decision that they made. So yes, there are two victims in every abortion. Yes. Um, and that is the child, of course, that right. uh, loses, um, loses its life, and the mother who carries that burden with her for the rest of her life. For the rest of her life. But um, to look up in the yellow pages, if, if there's such a thing still. <laughs> You can Google, yeah, Google uh, on, online, online uh, Pregnancy Resource Center. Um, there's a 1-800-395-HELP um, as a phone number that people can, can use. Uh, That's throughout as the well. nation? Or mm -hmm. just throughout throughout really? the nation, yes. It's a hotline, and then the um, people that answer the phone can direct the women to, to a pregnancy or a, a, a post-abortion ministry in their area. You deal with Canada too. I there are services like that in Canada yeah, as well. Yeah, I should get in touch with them to get more information from them. Finally, parents, parenting can be shown how to be wholesome again, thus allowing moms and dads to be one with the children. They are precious to children in God's eyes, and also have the right to life. I find that to be a uh, very it's an appropriate yes. uh, uh, summation of our conversation I think yeah. um, and I would not disagree with that at all ultimately every child deserves a mother and a father right. um, and to grow up in a secure home that right. can't always happen but that should be our ultimate goal we live in a sinful world and again the Lord gives us freedom of our own um, free will mm -hmm. and um, decisions have consequences. We can come alongside people who've made bad decisions. We've all made bad decisions and mm -hmm. there are consequences. Yeah. But we can come alongside and help them work through their crisis and uh, see this child as a gift from God, which it really is. You know, with um, dysfunctional families, only the mother or the bringing up the child or being pregnant and not having a husband or, or whatever happened to the other half, the, uh, the, the man, uh, they'll be needing a lot of help. Indeed. Especially the younger ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, they, they have a lot of very real needs. We're not denying that at all. Yeah. But as the body of Christ, that's why we're here. We love you. Oh, likewise, my dear. <laughs> Well, this is Patty Hunter, and Kathy, you were a delight. Thank and you for cool. having me. Yes, um, you're, anytime. You're quite informative, and uh, you spoke the truth. And I hope our uh, new president, that's going to be inaugurated in January, Donald Trump, will be the type of president we really do need to help our people, and especially the babies. So thank you, Kathy Hamburger. God bless. And God bless to you. See you next week. God speed my love until we meet again. You're always in my heart and every dream. 
Oh.